Welcome to Scared Bennett. I'm Reverend Sandrea Tover, the Executive Director at Scared, and today I am so delighted to have the talented uh, artist, poet, laureate of uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, and it's all out, and I'm going to say Fiskite, <laughs> uh, with me today as we most only talk about his uh, poetry, his art. We have the distinct pleasure of having it exhibited here at Scarrett Bennett Center in the Lasky Building on the second floor. And so we invite you at any point to come to Scarrett to most certainly view uh, Mr. Henry Jones's work on the second floor of Lasky. It is free and open to the public, but we are going to get a glimpse of really firsthand about the exhibit on today. Uh, it is an amazing exhibit. Every time I view it, I see something different. I uh, have a different experience and emotion about it. Uh, it is that it has poetry as well as the paintings associated with it. And so we invite you down to see it. Uh, but today, tonight, just for a few moments, we get to talk about art and poetry and really the man behind it all, <laughs> Henry Jones. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. We are so excited here at Scarrett to have you. You are no stranger to Scarrett. You have been here before. You are here all the time with your poetry, yeah. with your art. Uh, you, In fact, I believe it was 2014 that you actually had an exhibit here before, 2014, that's, 2015. That's right. Freedom Echoes. Mm -hmm. Freedom Echoes. Well, before we get into that, uh, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, we all know that you're a poet lawyer. We all know that you have famed exhibits all over the United States. Uh, not only are you a poet and a, and, a, and a painter, but you've had them all over the United States. And so we want to know a little bit more about the man behind it all. Hmm. Um, I, you know, if there was a word to kind of summed up me, I'd say I'm a dreamer. Oh, awesome. Uh, but then when someone calls another, per uh, someone says that someone is a dreamer, they tend to say, that tend to implies someone that keeps their head in the clouds, mm. but doesn't set forth some type of plan to make the dream a reality. And, but I still call myself a dreamer. Mm -hmm. I don't publicly say, hey, I'm a dreamer or this or more of a juggler because some of the things you mentioned and um, I'm, I have a wonderful wife, wonderful family, three adult children. And I was telling someone the other day that they've grown up going to the various exhibits and literary events and plays and things because I always said, if my kids can't be there, I can't be there. And they were very well behaved. People were like, what, what is wrong with, they're, they're like little angels, you know, but the, they just, and we didn't tell them anything, you know, back in the day, you know, uh, you hear stories, parents say, take uh, children, don't touch nothing, don't ask yeah, for so nothing. Get <laughs> you know, the rules before right. you get out of the car. <laughs> exactly. We never had to do that, and our children were very inquisitive about what they saw and would ask questions, and so proud of them, because even now as adults, mm -hmm. they're out there doing different things in the arts. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you have artists in the camp. Yes, yes. Well, the the two oldest are in other fields, but they still are. They go to different arts type events and things. One is into this, the dancing on the pole, and um, that was something I'd never seen. I mean, on the on the um, screen. Ariel, uh huh. Yeah, and that was beautiful. I was like, wow, and how graceful. And she grew up in dance making ballet and tap mm -hmm. and all those things. So I could see that. And the, the middle child, the oldest is Shinna Ray, then Cece. She danced in college, started a dance troupe at American University. And Shinna Ray took art classes, I think, as uh, objectives uh, at Spelman. Mm. So they always, and then Sienna, and our youngest, just recently graduated at University of the Arts, theater major and, and awesome. writing. And she's already got into projects. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm floored because I said, that's wonderful. <laughs> so the apple didn't fall too, fall too far from the tree. No, no. Awesome, awesome, awesome that you are spurring on even uh, additional artists that will most certainly uh, blossom even more. Uh, 
to take it on. That, that's an awesome legacy to leave uh, for everyone. That not only your work, but the work that will come forth from your children mm -hmm. is going to be awesome as well. Thank you. The, like we said, that you have been here about 2014 um, with an exhibit called Freedom Echoes, Three Views of Hope and Memories. Uh, and now the exhibit that is here at Scarrett now is One Journey, I'm sorry, One Song for Three Journeys. Mm -hmm. uh, so after nearly a decade, um, what's the difference? What's been the journey, if you will, now? The difference is, because I was reflecting when I was putting this exhibit together, and um, yeah, almost 10 years ago, with Freedom Echoes, first of all, I had about half as many paintings. Yeah. Um, and, and I love the space that's available because, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to tell a story, if you leave out certain pages, mm -hmm. it it, it kind of disrupts things. So, you know, give you a book and say, oh, this is a great story. And then I tear out some pages and you reach that point and you're like, what, what are the rest of the pages? So this gives me the opportunity to show the rest of the pages. Now, Freedom Echoes did have all the pages. It's just that I had to condense it. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the space, I wish I had more. more. And uh, so now I have more, can say more and share more. This exhibit looks like it expands a couple of years, uh, 2018 to about 20, what, 21? Um, yes. There are, it, the oldest are 2018. 2018, right. okay. Um, of the 30, five of them are within that 2018, 19, 20. Okay. Range, about five. And the other 25 are... Yeah. Which um, I put the older pieces in because sometimes when, when an exhibit is done, uh, galleries, they want you to show pieces that have done recently, like within two years. But I, I looked at it and I said, well, this is not a commercial gallery. I've got a message here and I have these five pieces here. It makes no sense and, and, and they're beautiful and I want to show them. And some of them have not been shown. Um, I'm going to include these because mm -hmm. their message is part of the flow that is within the exhibit. So I brought those in. Speaking of the flow that's in the exhibit, um, how would you describe it? We have the three journeys, and if you will describe each journey um, that is embodied in the one song. It's like water. It's like water. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm a swimmer. We go to the, the beaches. I have my, my mask and the flippers and all that. And, uh, I see it as water because there are these continuous connections from one piece to the other. When I paint, I'm creating images that spiral and connect. And I sometimes even get frustrated because I'm sweeping out like certain mm. energetic motions and then boom, I'm on the edge. You okay. Know? okay. But um, they're all connected by those two. So it's almost like uh, you have hands reaching out or fingers reaching mm -hmm. toward each other. So if you see one image and it's talking about this particular, even if it's one of the 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 um, the journeys inward, mm -hmm. it reaches out to another painting that is connected to it. Why the title? <laughs> You know, um, there are three journeys because you know how they say we're all mind, body, soul, spirit, things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, what do I want to show? What do I want to say? Mm -hmm. And I looked at the whole idea of a journey. Everyone has some type of journey in which they set off in life. They, they have a dream. Mm -hmm. And... To achieve it, they say, I'm going to have to go through this path. And some of us will look at where we've been in the past or how we were raised or what we experienced. And unfortunately, they say, well, I really could become that. But if it was only, if it was not only for so-and-so that happened to me, I haven't healed, I haven't gotten over it. I tried it. And that's when 
all these inhibitions and fears kind of mm-hmm. get in the way. I, I, I look at that. I look at that in terms of myself and different situations in terms of history, cultural connections. That there's a lot to deal with. And I say, well, all that can be done. What could I show that perhaps can reach people? And what are those three ways? So I looked at the wholeness of the earth, inner reflection, and then cultural identity, or mm-hmm. just identity in general. And at first I thought they were separate, but I said, no, 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 no. And I was going to uh, arrange the pieces on their own designated area. Mm. So, you know, all the wholeness over here, mm-hmm. all, you know, and so forth. And I said, you know, these paintings are like people where there's no separation of who we are. We go through differences until one minute we're vibing with the world and relating. The next minute we're in ourselves trying to figure things out internally. Yes. And another with self-identity, we're connecting with family and how we're raised and so forth. And it's just a constant flow. That's why I said it's like water. It's like water. Um, I mentioned that I have the pleasure of seeing the exhibit every day. Uh, and perusing and walking around uh, the gallery and looking and uh, reading the poetry. Um, And each time I I see something different and I think I've been able to uh, have the pleasure of having you explain some things to me about one of the photos. Uh, And I'm still trying to find all the people in the, the <laughs> in the time piece. There's an amazing yeah. uh, painting uh, that is there that has a lot of people that are in it, but you have to really, I guess, focus and take yourself away to uh, within the water yeah. uh, to, to, to find each and every one of them. But what I found, though, is that each time I look, not only do I see something different, but I have a different experience with a new song emerging. Yes, yes. So uh, a new song, may one day it may be uh, some Frankie Beverly and Mays, Mm -hmm. Joy and Pain. Mm -hmm. If I go through (laughs) one of the sides and pick out whatever, uh, looking at some of the photos. Another day it may be um, a feeling of, um, what is it, Um, Andre Day's Mm -hmm. Rise Up. You know, another day I might Ah, feel that, I might feel that. So what do you feel when you take a step back and kind of peruse hmm. all that you have done, uh, the work, the one song and three, three mm-hmm. journeys when you come up, if you've been up a couple of times, kind of just going back through right. and having people and explaining some things to some people, what song or songs mm-hmm. come to mind for you? You know, um, I was fighting with that, that whole notion because I said, did I say one song for three jer- Because there is no one song, but it does happen, as you say, mm-hmm. where a particular song. So they, I play music when I paint. Oh. So, and of course, I'm not painting uh, uh, playing multiple songs, but there, I'm the type of person, when I hear music, I will replay that sucker several times <laughs> over and over and over. And if anyone's in the house when I'm painting, it's like, you know there are uh, youngest. You know there are other songs. songs that, to why are you playing this twenty times? Uh-huh. It's because every time I hear, hear that song, even though I'm familiar with the lyrics, I'm feeling something different. And um, but, for instance, I love Tracy Chapman. Okay. And her song, "I'm Ready," is one song that I remember when I first heard it. I was like, "Oh my God, yeah," because. I could feel it, and it's it's the when I hear certain songs, and I connect with them, mm-hmm. I get that tingling sensation, and the lyrics that the uh, musician is singing, or or sometimes instrumental pieces. It just connects with me, and with that connection, it's gonna connect, connect with it. certain associations of images, like if they're singing about a certain period, and I think back to that, and have those memories, and then boom an image comes, and sometimes it may be a poem that comes from that, mm. or a piece of art. Is it a particular genre of music? Oh, no. Well, you know, I, I, I used to say, I like all music, and I said, well, to be honest with that statement, that means you 
heard a lot of different music. Mm -hmm. And there's forms of music I haven't heard, but and that's why I say, well, I love reggae. There's some rock I like um, with their lyrics. Uh, there's jazz. That is, that, if I had to put it in a, some type of hierarchy, it'd be jazz at the top, blues, gospel, well, spirituals, then gospel rap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's so many forms of music, and sometimes I'll just let myself guide it. You know. Or I have a day that there's a certain musician. I'll go to YouTube and find a certain musician and say, I want to hear him or her all day. And just let it play and inspire And that inspires me. you to mm -hmm. paint or write poetry. Yes. You said dreamer. Uh, so are you finding that your, uh, when we first started, you described yourself as a dreamer. Are you finding that your poetry or your paintings, which one comes more from your dreaming? That would be the, the, the art. That would be the art because mm -hmm. dreams are powerful for me mm -hmm. in terms of um, imagery. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm instantly connecting with that. And sometimes in dreams, you ever have these, these lucid dreams where it seems like, first of all, nothing is freakish. And you wonder, am I really dreaming? Because <laughs> everything seems normal. And, um, but somewhere within that dream, something unusual happens that I see that as some type of message mm -hmm. for me to take out of this, from that sleep moment. And when I wake up, I grab paper and say, like, okay, that line that I said, I've had dreams um, where I was at a place reading poetry that I've yet to write. Oh, wow. And I would grab paper and begin to write that, now, what was that line that I started? And I would write it down. Because I'm, I'm familiar with poems I've written mm -hmm. and yet to write. So uh, so the poetry has come from that. and But most of it is the art, yes. Wow. That is amazing to, vi to vividly see in the spirit, because we are at this safe, safe space here at Scarrett, to see in the spirit um, what you are to write, what you are uh, to paint, um, that is uh, really an expression, really, of the divine coming through and in you and out of you uh, to be able to share with everyone else. Mm, thank you. Uh, and so that is an amazing expression, not only of a human experience, um, but you often connect with that we see through your paintings as well as the poetry, uh, but really a, a connection to the divine and all that is the divine of the creativity and the creative nature mm -hmm. of the divine. Yes. Um, that's, that, that is amazing. That is amazing. Um, so your technique is, is kind of unique. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, describe for us your technique? Is it's uh, often been described as, as it's a self-described giving or is uh, giving a, a, a piece? What Describe the giving technique that you use. I've had to, to really clarify giving okay. because some people would hear it and say, oh, well, you paint with your hands. I was like, no, it's, it's not just that. Mm -hmm. Because the, the ritual, the preparation, and those connections, mm -hmm. some of the things that I mentioned, that is part of the process. Okay. And I get lost in creativity when I'm creating something. And it's, 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 a, it's a feeling of timelessness. And this wonderful being, uh, phasing out distractions that are there. And I've heard, I remember um, there was an artist, a musician, talking about he could see colors in music. And that's how he composed them. And I could relate to that because when I'm there in the moment, I'm part of it. For instance, if I'm painting... A, a a painful path, a memory. It's just so I'm standing in that room where that particular memory occurred, or something that I've seen, and it versus seeing something on television, and I'm feeling things. Mm -hmm. So I'm this, and then and also 
sometimes I am part of what I'm seeing versus a spectator. So, but I'm feeling it. So I'm seeing, I'm feeling, and I'm trying to interpret the feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think when I dream, it's, it's difficult. I only sleep four hours per day. And I was tested because it's like, you need to what? sleep more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say you're supposed to get eight. Exactly. And they, they test me and say, well, you don't have any problems with your health. So that's just you. Because everyone, you know, there is no real norm for anything, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, those signs, well, do you have confusion? No. In fact, if I sleep too long, I feel worn out. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's just this, um, it's a ritual. I was a starer as a child, an intense starer. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was a portrait artist. And when we would go, my brother and I would go visit my grandmother. She'd be in the corner painting. And I would want to touch things. And she's like, no, 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 just leave stuff alone. And it was distracting for her. But she, one day she gave me this little exercise to stare at something because I wanted to paint. She said, well, you got to learn to draw and blah, blah, blah. And she gave me this object to look at. I think it was a flower or something. And she said, I want you to look at this flower like you're looking at me over there. And I'm going to ask you about it. And what she asked me, she told me to close my eyes and then tell her what I saw. Mm -hmm. um, you know, went through that, just a flower and stuff. But with that exercise, and this is done over and over again, through different visits, and it's like a little game. Because she taught me how to look at something and then reach within it. Mm. So not just looking at the flower, but what petal is here, what is the shape, and all these things. And I learned that that's how she saw things as an artist. And I just look at the world that way now, where I'm looking at this microcosm. Mm -hmm. And forces like water, I don't just see this fluid moving. I'm putting myself in the water. So it's like this, all those connections and so forth. So giving involves seeing, mm -hmm. connecting, being in there, the physical and the emotional. So that all of that is brought into the painting. Yes. I'm, I'm like the... Um, Conduit. Exactly, the conduit, and then put it. And so what is in here, what I've trapped in here and is seen on the different levels, I'm painting it, mm -hmm. it's coming out, and then I see, that's it. That is the image that I have here. For some artists, they, when they paint, they create a cartoon or, or they paint from a photo. But my images and the feelings and so forth are up here, or actually in here. And then I put it on the wood or the canvas with the colors. Are you using, um, what do you use to paint with? Is it mainly, is it, <laughs> oh, oh, mixed medium, it, okay. Mixed, <laughs> I will use, I've never used an excuse mm -hmm. that I don't have this particular type of pigment, thus I can't paint. So mm -hmm. I will use practically anything. Uh, a science major, I, I love, a biology major in college. I love chemistry too. I fell in love with organic chemistry and all, and and all, because I can relate. I say, oh wow, yeah, these are all the products that we use here. And I, I even thought about biochemistry or something like that. Um, so there are certain materials that I've used because I've said I want to experiment with this because I see the way it reacts. Because in the arts, the main thing is you have something that's not going to deteriorate. It has longevity. Mm -hmm. We use oils because in the past, oils were used. And they were used with a lot of flowers and petals and things, a lot of natural things and then embedded. And you know, you have the, the resin and all this other stuff to stabilize. And then acrylics came and people mm -hmm. said, oh, no, 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 I don't touch acrylics. I, I use oil, my paintings are oil. And I see that in certain artists and I was like, okay. But if you can only afford acrylics, which are much cheaper than oil, don't let that hinder you. You know, go ahead and use your acrylics. And, and I, but I love mixed media because I love trying different things. I will have my charcoal with the ink and I'll put some broken pieces of uh, 
powdery pastels, whatever I think I'm going to just see how it works. And I've done it enough to say, you know what that needs? And then I apply it. So would you say, are you, did you obtain any degrees in, in painting or was this all self-taught? Or, self-taught. Or would you say that your grandmother taught you how to my, paint? My grandmother, my, my art background includes this. The summers going to visit my grandmother and asking questions and watching, and she's answering questions and things. Mm-hmm. And then at Fisk, um, our, the cr- uh, crossway was my dormitory. And this woman came up. And you, you know, there's certain looks and certain, you can see someone say, that person's an artist. Mm-hmm. And she came up and said, hey, you're good. It was doing time of registration for classes. And then, uh, have you registered for all your classes and so on and so on? And I was like, I'm on my way there. Would, would you consider taking up, do you like art? You know, and she was going on with her campaign about the benefits of art. And I was like, yeah, you like to draw. I was like, What's your major? I said, biology. And I was taking a lot of heavy other classes. And I was like, yeah, that, that would be cool. And that was LaFran Ford. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, I took the class. And you're a science major. Everything is just intense, intense mm-hmm. study and so forth. And the first day, she gave us a bouquet of flowers and said, I want you to pick a flower and draw it. And in, I remember in my mind, why did I take this class? I got to do this. I got to get to the lab. And, you know, mm-hmm. test is coming up. And um, I took some flowers and I sketched it. And then I put it down. And I started picking up one of my, my textbooks. And, and LaFran said, uh, young man, have you picked your flower? And I said, yeah, I'm done. She was like, what do you mean? I mean, because I, I can sketch quickly. I've, mm-hmm. I've drawn all my life and everything, mm-hmm. and, um, and I've drawn flowers, and I, I would draw all kind of things in nature. And in fact, as a biology major, that's how I remembered most of the things, the tissues and parts. Take a blank sheet of paper, and I'd say, okay, we're gonna be tested over this. And I would draw it, label it, open the book and check. Oh, wow. So I was drawing. Mm-hmm. And she picked it up, you, you, you're done. And she looked and said, you're an artist. I said, yeah, and then we got to talking, became good friends. And she let me continue to draw that way because I explained, I got a test coming up. I got to get this stuff studied and prepared. And, uh, but I had a ball. We talked a lot. Um, the university is small and private, as you know. You would have the opportunity to speak with professors mm-hmm. and get to know them versus when I was in graduate school, it was this huge auditorium, like at a concert, music concert. Um, but I was going through a difficult time emotionally and I saw that as a spiritual moment because she would say things about life and art that echoed my grandmother Mm -hmm. and I always know that there are certain people that come in your life at a certain moment and all and um, still embrace her and love her to this very day we moved from Chicago here to Nashville and I said here and I keep her updated what I'm doing and she's come to some events yes I do remember yeah. looking. and uh, Spring Arts Festival at Fisk University yes with uh, LaFrain Ford yes oh definitely yes. Um, so you've gone from sketching to abstract mm-hmm. yeah I went through that and it was in graduate school still doing that I was a human physiology major mm-hmm. applying to medical school I, I, I really wanted to get into research and I'd never met different researchers and it, but at FIS I talked to some professor they're like oh yeah you can do this do that I was like that sounds dynamite yeah I'll get into that went on to graduate school and um, my next door neighbor was an art major mm-hmm. and he came into I invited him in because we talk in the hall and he looked because I was painting between being in the lab studying the classes it was a lot more intense <laughs> at graduate school. <laughs> but it, I was having fun, but it was a lot of mm-hmm. work, you know, even though I like science. But he saw paintings just all around the room. I had a desk with all my books, a bookshelf with all my books, a desk. And then he looked at that. He said, I thought you were a science major. He said, 
what is, oh, I don't know. I said, oh, I do that to relieve stuff. And he said, you should go to the art department and all that. And Anyway, he told me I should show these to someone mm. because I was just doing that for that balance, mm -hmm. you know. And um, anyway, I did commercial gallery, commercial gallery took me on. And then while in graduate school, I was, um, I helped a quadruple, quadriplegic student who was tutoring and then he lost his, um, they were people that would help get him out of bed and ready for class. Mm -hmm. So I was tutoring him and then there was a, um, another a student like that in that situation. And I started doing these, the tutoring and helping. And one of them, you remember thalidomide? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that because I met this guy at undergrad. He was from that series, no arm major, a furniture maker. Wow. And he was taking the basic classes and stuff. I think it was a sophomore or mm -hmm. junior. Well, anyway, <laughs> we got to sharing notes and talking and I fell in love because I grew up with carpentry and stuff with my uncle Chuck and and I've always loved wood and he could he needed somebody that knew how to use tools and he and to sketch things for him. Sandrea, so I was like in I was in heaven because I didn't know that existed on the campus. So I was helping sketch his ideals and stuff. He was like, oh. Yeah, you I can draw, mm -hmm. and then laminate the wood, and he 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 we click so well, and I fell in love with the notion, I can make furniture. Of course, there are people that make furniture, so all that experience, I saw again meeting people, mm -hmm. and um, listening to my next door neighbor, all in his apartment, and I said, maybe I'm missing my calling, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then. Accepted to several medical schools, did an internship with the Forestry Service, fell in love with Missoula, Montana, and all the areas on the West Coast, never been there. And I would have to change my major. They're going to pay for that. And then in the summer, come back and work. Oh, wow. And when I got my degree, I could stay there and get the PhD or transfer to um, uh, a university in Montana, whichever. They would pay for it. Okay. I want to be an artist. <laughs> And my folks said, what? What about this? What Because I was excited, you know, uh, about those opportunities. Santa's. And and honestly, I, I wondered, dude, are you serious? Because you know? they were saying, you know you can draw it on that painting stuff when you, between, you know, the weekends Weekends. And stuff, uh, you can use doctor, that as a right. hobby. That right. you, let's not pursue <laughs> it. There are doctors that work part-time, and they do quite well, you know. And, and I considered all that, but there was just something inside of me that said, these things in science, mm -hmm. they give me that, that thrill and, and feel, feel curiosity, and, mm -hmm. and I had a desire to help because, but the reason I wanted to become a doctor, for instance, when I was growing up, there was a lot of death that I experienced. My grandmother that I mentioned, mm -hmm. in high school, she was dealing with cancer. Go from high school, from school, and go over to Baptist Hospital in Dallas. My mother and I would stay there many nights, and some days I wouldn't even have clothes, um, and go straight back to school, and do homework, eat, and everything, and until she died. And I put it in my head: if I become a doctor, people won't die, hmm. because I was. It was heavy on my heart. I was on that. A medicine for anxiety because my st I had ulcers because I'm worrying about her, and um, it's just so much going on. But then I said maybe I can heal others in a different way. Yes. Because there were some um, many other experiences uh -huh. and things along the way mm -hmm. that I had, and it's I said science has always been fun and easy for me. Even our kids with astronomy and the, they did well in science because. I still love science. I still read the stuff. But there's something that this calling is meant for me to do. Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand it. And it seems very impractical and even illogical for me to leave these wonderful opportunities. But there's something. And I did that leap of faith, as they call it.
I think, well, and as I'm listening to you and you're saying you started off with this passion uh, to heal mm -hmm. uh, by being a doctor, I, and what I'm sensing and what I've really experienced firsthand through others who've come through the gallery upstairs in Lasky here at Scarrett is that they have such an emotional connection with your poetry as well as the art, um, visibly to tears. So I would venture to say uh, that you are practicing healing through the art, yes. through both your paintings and your poetry, that then that becomes that you are the doctor of arts. You're the doctor of, of healing through uh, your painting as, as well as the poetry, because that has an, uh, a therapeutic effect on individuals to be able to connect in such a way uh, that then that emotes uh, that connection is coming through, whether it be the painting, whether it be the poetry, uh, that they feel that connection and can receive uh, the healing that is needed and, and most certainly uh, desired because mm -hmm. it pulls you in. Uh, where I think there was one um, that, like I said, that was talking about the joy and the pain and the emergence, um, one of the paintings and the poetry. And when you're seeing it visually um, and then reading it, mm -hmm. then that uh, connection between the two then becomes, oh, that's what I needed. That's what I was missing. And then that becomes the healing point for individuals uh, to either begin their journey of healing or um, to resonate while they're on their healing journey mm -hmm. or to complete their healing. Yes. And um, so... Having said that, what comes first, the poetry or the painting? I let them decide. You let, let them I decide. Let them decide. <laughs> um, I say I'm going to rest. I, I, I plan to rest. I mm -hmm. always plan to rest. Uh -huh. But when I get home, something's going to call me to do something. Because mm -hmm. even earlier today, I was in there and I said, you need to rest before coming here. Because last night was intense. Mm -hmm. I said, just take it easy. But I was typing. And I wrote, started a poem on while driving here. Oh, <laughs> wow. And, and that's, that's the most dangerous thing I do, actually, because uh, I can't have anyone in the car. Remember, you remember the laws, don't text and drive? Don't text and drive. I, I have paper, and I'm like. Don't write and drive to, either. Oh, my God. And, and, and I've had some near misses. So, when something is coming out, mm -hmm. the words and all, I will pull over. But as I mentioned about the dream and hearing mm -hmm. a, um, a ver few verses and things, I'm like, I got to get this down right now. Because if you don't write it down and say, I'll get back to it mm -hmm. other t later today or whatever, life happens, mm -hmm. other thoughts, other chores, responsibilities, or yes. you just get tired. And it's gone. And mm -hmm. that, that really makes me upset. That's why I'm eager to, to write it down. Now, to answer your question, sure, I might write down a couple of lines, mm -hmm. thinking I'm about to kick out this stanza, of this new poem and so forth. But there's this hindrance at times. And I'll look at it. I do puzzles on the phone. And there's, I love to do the ones where you take words mm -hmm. uh, that give you um, well, there's one that has a dial, just the letters, and you compose all these different words. It's similar to that because I'm, I'm hearing those verses in my mind over and over again to hear the next parts. Now, while I'm hearing those words, the, those verses, they're creating images. So okay. sometimes, and I just got, I just some images, and I'll say, oh, like so-and-so, and then I'm on this other journey where I'm now mm -hmm. thinking about a painting mm -hmm. and then if I'm in the room boom a painting comes and at some point and then and, and this happens also the painting is complete after several days and I'm looking at it and I wonder what do I call this I know what it's about but what do I call this I'll give it a title and I was like man that sounds like a poem mm. <laughs> and thus, mm, the, 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 the cycle of, of chaos, and it, it, it continues, it continues, mm. yeah. 
So it's hard to say. That's what you see. Yeah, it's hard to say. but because they're both pretty much simultaneous. It's like a, a, a simultaneous synergy yes, between both the of word. the. Yeah, there's a synergy between the poetry as well as the paintings at the same time. Right. So the vastness, if you will. Um, as I'm asking my questions, those that are watching by YouTube or uh, by Facebook, please let us know if you have any questions for Henry. You can type them in or uh, and let us know, and we will most certainly uh, we have people watching, and they will get us the questions regarding if you have a question that you want to ask uh, Henry. And then we'll those that are here and uh, live, if you have a question, we'll uh, get that get that from you as well. Uh, but we will be wrapping up shortly and wanted to make sure that we got your questions in. Uh, but uh, I, your art form is vast. It seems as if, you know, we have the paintings, we have the poetry, we have the murals, we have book covers, we have mm -hmm. furniture that I'm just now hearing. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a few pieces that I brought from Chicago down in the, the garage, and I'm like, I need to bring that up. But I'm like, realistically, I, I, that's what I've learned about myself. How much time do you need to do mm. this? Do you see what's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. Do you have the time? You don't have the t Don't bring it up because it's going to yeah. frustrate you. <laughs> F complete those other things and, and get to it when it's time. But if it's calling you. That's the problem, yeah. Then it's calling you for that exactly. moment. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, which one do you pr that you enjoy most? I, I enjoy anything that helps me pull out. Mm -hmm. um, I've done set designs for plays, and mm -hmm. I'm involved, I'm set designer for a, a play that's coming out, um, Music City Jubilee. It's not going to be abstract images. It's going to be this wonderful train. It's about the Fist Jubilee Singers, mm -hmm. uh, with the perspective of Ella Shepard, one oh, of the awesome. Fist Jubilee mm -hmm. Singers. And I love them that. Railroad tracks as a child, mm -hmm. and used to love the train and hearing the train. So there's a lot of memories, and and, and I love, love, love the Jubilee Singers. The first time I heard them as a student, I just sat there. I was like, I've heard spirituals, but I've never, never heard it like heard, that. Yes, 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 and um, and I knew I was in the right place too. Um, so any opportunity for me to to pull for myself. I like challenges. Mm -hmm. I like to set goals and then see how I can get things done and and do it. And then later, it's like, wow, that was a lot of work. Pretty intense, but I got it done and learned something from it. So you can't pick out one? No. <laughs> I'm, 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 no They're I all, they all no. call you at various different points, right. and so therefore uh, you enjoy the journey on each and every each and every one. Yeah, some are painful. Some are painful. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do have to tell myself, if you try to get over here and do this, do this, it's going to be nothing because mm -hmm. you're, you're not focused. So you have to look at something that with the time and the resources, mm -hmm. that's the other thing, that you have available, can you get this done? Mm -hmm. You can have the, and I think that's a good life lesson. You can want to do things, and I think back to what I said, it's a dreamer. You can have a dream to achieve something, but if you don't have the resources, the connections, the education, the skills, which is necessary mm -hmm. to make that dream a reality, it will remain a dream. It's not going to manifest. It's not going to manifest. So that's what I ask myself. What do I need? I see it. Mm -hmm. I want to bring it out, and it needs to come out, but what do I need to make that possible? I'm going to ask one more question myself and get you to thinking about this. One of, the, one of our uh, viewers would love to hear you recite one of the poems from the exhibit. I don't know if you have any with you or that you can remember or recite by uh, from the from any of the pieces. And I was thinking I might have one, but I don't think I brought it down. Um, but they would love to hear you recite a poem from one of your, from the exhibit. 
there were 30 poems, and in the past I would just display an occasional poem, and I said, I want a, a poem for each piece. Mm -hmm. I don't memorize my poems. I have poems I, I memorize, but those I did not <laughs> memorize. <laughs> So they're going to have to come to so Scary Bennett Center to the Lasher Gallery now, and, now, and look at uh, and, and, and let's see some of the, por the portrait and the painting right. on the second floor. Uh, now, in all fairness, <laughs> what I can do, because I have, I have poems in me, um, if I think about a particular piece in mm -hmm. the exhibit, okay. I can relate. Like if, if for whatever reason that file was corrupted and you guys lost the label and so forth, and he said, well, it's gone. Can you write another one? I would probably write a poem right from somewhat the... similar oh, wow. to what was in it. Because I'm, sometimes, you know, you remember things. You mm -hmm. just, it's just subconsciously has mm -hmm. to be tapped to bring it mm -hmm. out. So if there's a particular painting that you can mention. Oh, well, I can probably could. The, uh, the woman um, crying and uh, the big one. Uh, she walks in the um, garden of her tears. The, well, she walks in the garden of her tears. Oh, okay. Um, life has called her many times, where the bruises of her past have beat her, and she stood there taking it, listening to what she was told a woman should be. She ran from, those pa from that past, no longer running from herself, wanting to heal. She ran to a garden and saw that it was watered by her tears, all the memories, and she drank from those tears and was fulfilled and new. That's really close, if not the same. Oh, that is amazing! It, it isn't it, Miss? Uh, yes, yeah, it's longer, it, it's longer but that this is pretty much right, the same. Because right. I remember walking through, and she is fulfilled uh, with the garden of her tears. I remember that line mm -hmm. uh, from from that particular uh, painting. And as I was saying it, I'm seeing the painting in mm -hmm. front of me mm -hmm. and looking mm -hmm. at certain mm -hmm. regions and things mm -hmm. to pull mm -hmm. that out. Um, oh, amazing. Uh, so, yes, uh, the gallery uh, is, the art exhibit is up here at the Lasky uh, Gallery at Scarrett Bennett Center. It is here until March the 29th. Uh, it is, you can, those that are here tonight can most certainly go over after uh, this discussion with Henry tonight and, and peruse uh, the gallery. But we invite you at any time uh, that we're open, uh, 8.30 to 8.30 to 4.30 uh, to come and peruse the gallery. Uh, it is amazing. And you have an opportunity also to purchase any of the artwork that, that, that speaks to you and that you just cannot leave it here. <laughs> we want you to make sure that you purchase that uh, p particular piece of artwork uh, and to have in your home, in your offices, um, that speaks to you, that says uh, what um, your heart's longing desire is, what song it says to you, what um, imagery that it uh, brings and conjures up for you, what healing it brings to you. We most certainly want you to... Uh, purchase it and that way you will have it always with you but Henry will be back on campus uh, in a couple of months to actually to read his poetry and so that will be another opportunity for you to experience uh, Henry the, the talented uh, Henry Jones that has all of not only the stroke of the of the pen but also the stroke of the brush uh, all within his hands, and so we want you to uh, certainly come uh, to back when we have Henry back for to recite his poetry mm -hmm. uh, April, during that time. National, National Poetry Month, April. And yes. it's April, April next uh, April next. Yes. I'm already in March, so I, I I'm saying uh, 
uh, but it will be April, uh, March. The exhibit here ends March the 29th. Uh, he uh, has an exhibit now that is wrapping up at the Parthenon, Ken yes. Folk with Omar Booker, right? Yes, uh, Kindred is, Links. Kindred, yes. Kindred Links is wrapping up there uh, this weekend. Uh, he's all around town, but it is certainly befitting as we are closing out. Or uh, One last question. Uh, February is Black History Month. Yes. Uh, people hear about uh, black people who have achieved and all of their historical first. Uh, and most certainly you are the Port Lauderdale, excuse me, of Hendersonville, Tennessee, which occurred in March 2021. And of course you're black, but how has the journey been for you? Is my, I guess my last closeout question. Um, as an artist, as an African-American artist. Poetry is difficult mm -hmm. um, because that <laughs> poetry is difficult and you don't have a lot of people as I say any form of the arts actually but you don't have a lot of people that will call you and say oh I just bought this really great book of poetry or I just discovered this new poet you really must, versus a movie <laughs> you know or something like that um, but from March 2021 even up to today, I met people that actually wrote poetry. We had a uh, an event at the Parthenon mm -hmm. called Poetry yeah, at the Parthenon. Mm -hmm. It's this drastic event where we invited people that particularly were not poets and they were guests. They wrote poems after seeing Omari and my work mm. and moving pieces. And some people came in and said, oh, I'm going to keep writing. That was the best thing I heard. So that's something that even in Hendersonville, I aspire to do. Okay. And I had different uh, projects that people just, I put it, I was the, uh, well, I still am, the poet in residence of the Hendersonville Public Library. So most of the activities were there. Mm -hmm. and when you walked in the door, I had a, a mural, a word mural in the front and this sculpture of poetry. In other words, you're gonna see this stuff. I said to myself, you're gonna wonder what's going on here. And they did, mm -hmm. they did. and. Um, but that's what I, I, I say to myself. It's that old adage, almost like in, in um, the business world, put it in the window and it'll sell. sell. I said, I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to make you wonder about it. Mm -hmm. Read about it. That's the kind of mm -hmm. But I've enjoyed it. And um, there are a lot more projects. And I got people excited okay. about writing poetry mm -hmm. and reading. And to me, that's wonderful right there. Okay, so the poetry... Um, and the painting uh, has inspired not only you, uh, but others to do the same. And in the last couple of moments that we have, are there any questions from the audience here? Uh, before we close out our discussion, our conversation with uh, the most talented, formidable Henry Jones. Any questions? Everybody just wants to hear me to read poetry. <laughs> <laughs> to recite the poetry that's on your mind <laughs> that, that you're thinking about. Uh, and so I want to give you one more. Uh, the one that I cannot re cannot find all other people in. The one on the The corner. one um, with time. With time. Right. Mm -hmm. That there's the whirlwind mm -hmm. um, and, um, and it's, people are emerging mm -hmm. out of uh, out of it. Yeah, it's mentioned the love of science and of course sci mm -hmm. not all science lovers love sci-fi. Um, I'm fascinated with time travel and mm -hmm. that piece came from there and the universe and our nature in our world nothing but color mm -hmm. and I said to myself okay in the movies they show this watery type tunnel and wormhole and all that. I said I bet when you go through time it's just this beautiful blend of color. Mm -hmm. So that's where that piece came from. I was just envisioning that. And with color, because we're extensions of nature. We're extensions yes. of everything. So to believe that what comes from the imagination is devoid of where we are, that's why. Even the building here, it's, it's actually an extension of how insects build things. So that piece. Mm -hmm flowing through time, linked with the colors, 
trying to find myself, seeking a different world, perhaps becoming a different person, different place and thing to find my lost love. Mm. Um, that's not the poem that's there. But that's, that's close. That's, <laughs> that's, close. that's, that's, that's something close. I'm just that's creating. Yes. Well, then the other one that is about love mm -hmm. uh, is the, the, it's on the opposite wall, on the opposite hall. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the blue, uh, and it has a person emerging. Um, and it seems as if there's a red eye or red heart in the center. Together we rise. Together we rise. Yeah. Right. When you said blue, because first like I a, thought you were about yeah. Strokes of Passion, mm -hmm. the pink one. But that's further that, Yeah, that's, the pink one is Strokes of Passion, yeah. yes, the blue one. The blue one. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind when you describing that one? That piece is about, literally from the title, in terms of dealing with a lot of um, chaos, dealing mm -hmm. with a lot of setbacks, and you're challenged with life. Mm -hmm. And when someone goes through, they look at their life and say, oh my God, I feel so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Many times we forget, and I think this is particularly important now, because there's a, um, there's a lot of events, conferences, and things on, on uh, the internet dealing with mental health. Mm -hmm. We forget that we are not alone. It, you don't have to go through mm -hmm. what you're going through alone. And we have these powerful little hand buddies that can reach out to people, but still the mind, mm -hmm. in terms of you s pulling out from that moment, you can, you can just feel, it's, it, it makes no sense. Why am I here? But we don't use resources. So that piece was to show the connections mm -hmm. of, there is somebody up there. In fact, there are smaller people to show you, have, you come from a lineage. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at, just not of ourselves, but how we were raised, Mm -hmm. And even think back to uh, different things that our, our, our parents and grandparents and other people in the family, friends of the family, told us about moments because they went through stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you can overcome that. But I think what happens, the mind and the heart just gets trapped in whatever they're dealing with, and you just, and then you get these negative thoughts and sense of hopelessness and mm -hmm. so on and so on and nobody cares and no we're, we're not alone we're not alone we're not alone and that's really needed now in this time when we can't connect and most of the other painting you did mention it the power of love the pink one mm -hmm. um and we'll close out with that one what um resonates from that particular painting intimacy mm. um when I was painting that, I remember the, the, the sound, because I mentioned music, but the sound of a heartbeat. When my wife was pregnant with our first child, I was to listen to her heart, and then I would try to listen to our developing daughter's heart. And I, I knew I couldn't, but it was just a, when I would, I would put my ear against the belly and just try to envision her. Mm -hmm. And you know, now they have ultrasounds where you can see very clear images it's amazing but back then it's like oh there she is with the other fuzzy stuff mm -hmm. but that piece is about the combination of inner intimacy mm -hmm. and being with that person that makes you feel whole and pulls out what you need mm. you know sometimes i think people get selfish but it's, it's, it's a give and take mm -hmm. you know we deal with so much in the world, yeah. you gotta come home to somebody got, mm -hmm. that helps you to go on the next day. <laughs> we are almost out of time, but I most certainly want to invite you all to experience the gallery, the exhibit, one song, three journeys yourself. Uh, the one journey, three songs, the pursuit of wholeness, uh, the paintings portray the realms of healing uh, as well as overcoming any obstacles. Journey two, the connection of identity uh, as we are delving into self-love and uh, inner images and cultural connections. And journey three, which is the desire for global reaching uh, images that are interweaving uh, of layers of outer other journeys. 
So we invite you to most certainly come to Skerritt Bennett Center uh, to partake in the awesome poetry as well as the paintings of Henry Jones. The gallery is open from about 8.30 to 4.30. We want you to uh, come take your time and walk through and have your experience, whatever it may be. Those that are here tonight can most certainly go over after this and peruse and look and have conversations with Mr. Jones uh, and have that dialogue. But again, thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Henry, Sandra, for giving me the this opportunity. Guy, uh, for taking this moment to sit down and talk with us uh, about, the, about your exhibit here. And thank you for allowing us to showcase uh, the exhibit here at Skerritt Bennett. If you uh, desire more information about Scarrett Bennett, most certainly go to our website. We are all about hospitality is in ju indeed justice. We have meet, eat, and sleep rooms available for you. <laughs> so if you have not had your experience of our Susie Gray Dining Hall with Chef Zen, you are missing out. Mm -hmm. But we most certainly want to invite you on our campus. It is most certainly a sac sacred space in which you can um, have a moment with the divine. God bless you and thank you.